Hey there, good morning. Let's see, we got some Smirnoff, uh, lemon lime, and uh, well, the king is back. His name is James, James Cameron, the bravest pioneer. And if you didn't know this, Avatar is being re-released for two weeks, and I wanted to see it, but you know, stuff got in the way. I'm gonna definitely see it this week and do a laser review later on. But um, basically, the re-release is when it came out uh, 13 years ago. It was still in 1080 and not in 480 and this whole new remaster and I'm definitely looking forward to seeing Avatar because like it or not, some people like it, some people don't. It is still in many ways the biggest movie of all time and uh, well, let me just break this down and enjoy the intro. Yeah, not bad lemon lime. That yeah, lemon lime. Okay, so right here. Avatar re-release proves there's still interest in Pandora. Will the way of water be another box office smash? It's going to be. Now Duh! will Avatar 2 have the su success of Avatar 1? Well, time, I mean, we'll see. I mean, it's Avatar 1 could be an anomaly. I mean, people have been waiting for the past 10 years, 11, 12 years. Like, is it just is it a one-time hit? We'll find out. So there are plenty of valid reasons to be skeptical about Avatar, The Way of Water. It's been more than a decade since James Cameron's otherworldly sci-fi epic Avatar opened in theaters in 2009. Like, wow. But it was smashing expectations on its way to becoming the biggest movie in history, with $2.85 in global ticket sales. But times, tastes, and box office expectations have changed drastically since moviegoers first made contact with the Na'vi. In the ensuing years, theater owners have developed a greater reliance on big-budget comic book spectacles and 3D technology, despite Cameron's best efforts, failed to take off in the way the filmmaker had hoped, especially since the pandemic. Billion-dollar hits outside of superhero space have been far and few between. Now, I've seen through various interviews why Avatar 2 takes so long. A whole bunch of reasons, but the main reason is... James Cameron was making a brand new technology for Avatar 2 in terms of like I don't see the bar yet. Looks like it must have sunk pretty low. With the dying thirst to be the first. Could it be? Yeah, it's him, James Cameron. Underwater cameras and stuff and the actors doing mocap suits, but you know, all the underwater scenes are the actual actors underwater. I know uh, Kate Winslet's in this film and apparently she held her breath and set some kind of like record and uh, yeah, so, but you know, it said I... Didn't get a chance to see Avatar in theaters because I was in jail. It sucked. And, um, you know, I tried watching it at home and it just didn't have the experience of being in 3D. And, yeah, I've, I've seen some 3D films uh, since Avatars came out and just they're not the same, I guess. And going by people that I've talked to who've seen Avatar in 3D in the theaters, it's still by far, according to them, the best, excuse me, 3D experience they've ever seen. So, dude, I just saw the best movie ever. We'll find out. But. After 13 years, we're in a different world now, where superheroes dominate the fantasy action space, says David A. Uh, Gross, well, it's Gross, <laughs> who runs the movie consulting firm Franchise Entertainment Research. But Cameron, the filmmaker behind behemoths like Titanic, Terminator, has never missed at the box office, and no, he hasn't, you know. And never miss. Even cynics believe that it's probably unwise to bet against a multi-billion dollar earning director. His name is James, James Cameron. Yet the fate of the follow-up is uncertain. Will The Way of Water, the first of three planned sequels in Cameron's sprawling futuristic series, be able to defy the odds and become a box office smash? Smash. Easily this is going to make a billion dollars. There's no way it's fucking not going to. Even if people don't like it. Oh, people will pay through the teeth to see it. Just the interest and just the 3D alone, they're going to see it just for the visuals. But will it have legs? I'm not sure. So, have superhero hungry audiences grown ambivalent about the visually captivating world of Pandora and thus the long delayed follow up? The second Avatar movie, which brings back Sam Worthington and Zoe Saldana and adds Kate Winslet and Michelle Yeoh, I didn't know she was in this, debuts on December 16th. Now, Disney and 20th Century have invested mind boggling amounts of money into the evolving cinematic universe, including. $250 million. A lot of money. To produce Avatar 2. With that in mind, The Way of Water won't satisfy by simply putting up big numbers at the box office. It needs to become a sensation to a, to a tune of at least $1 billion globally. Billion dollars. To please its backers and prove the naysayers wrong. After all, 
It is a sequel to the highest grossing movie of all time. Excuse me while I whip this out. <laughs> expectations will be towering. Yeah, I mean, it's, we'll see. Um, now, of course, expectations are going to be much higher than the usual 1 billion. Threshold most A-tier blockbusters chase, especially with the inevitable tick ticket price boost from 3D and premium screens around the world. Like, uh, I seen Top Gun Maverick in 4DX, and I guess uh, I broke some kind of record for 4DX, and it was amazing. It was amazing. If this weekend's re-release of Avatar is any indication, Navi Nation appears to be alive and well. In anticipation of The Way of Water, Cameron re remastered the original so Disney could bring it back to the big screen with flair. And of course, it's a killer marketing tactic for the upcoming installment. It's marketing! Just over this weekend, the film made an additional $10 million from 1980 North American theaters most of which were IMAX screens. Myself, uh, this, this week I'm going to see this in RPX. I just, I have to. <laughs> I have no choice. Enough to place third on box office charts behind new releases like Olivia Wilde's Don't Worry Darling, Don't Care. Um, Viola Davis's Woman King, eh. Do not care. Now, we're talking about a film that's 13 years old, which people can watch at home, says Paul, I can't say this name, whatever, Der Garbedian. <laughs> it's a made-up name. What's your real name? A senior media analysis with Comscore. The big draw is the IMAX presentation. Avatar is serving as a reminder of how cool the imagery of Pandora looks on a big screen. Now, I won't do this often, but as I said, I don't plagiarize stuff. I send this video to a friend of mine. I'm gonna click on right here. There's somebody, I'll tag him. You can look at the video yourself, but a person named Avatar Guy, and he puts down Avatar Remaster Changes Breakdown. I'm gonna show six seconds because of I have a small channel and copyright and not taking this guy's stuff. I'm gonna tag you, dude, but like he's showing right here the 1080p versus the remaster in 4k and just real quick yeah make sure i mean to look at that you can, as it really allows you to see the differences immediately you see the pick that's all i'm going to show because and i will make sure avatar guy gets his credit and tag him but i don't steal it's a re really good three three minute breakdown and just showing the difference between even 12 years ago versus now what this re-release is going to showcase and i'm looking very forward to seeing it so um now it says Box office watchers are especially encouraged by the turnout at the international box office where Avatar brought in 20 million from 50 overseas markets. It even managed to take number one spot on global charts with 30 million total. So 30 million over the weekend for a fucking 12 year old movie. Like it's still. I don't see the bar yet. Looks like it must have sunk pretty low. Uh, the first film made a still unmatched 2 billion over 70% of its total grosses internationally. So the international market, boys and girls. Global markets mostly. They're turning at a time when, when the worldwide film market is diminishing, at least for Hollywood blockbusters. Avatar 2 likely won't be playing in Russia, where the first one earned 117 million due to its invasion of Ukraine. And in China, where the first one got, wow, 261 million. As release date remains a question mark. I mean, it's true we're losing money. Things become, unfortunately, even Hollywood, even with releases, extremely fucking political now, where now certain countries won't see things. I know Top Gun Maverick still hasn't played in China. It says right here. Um, let's see. Yeah, Chinese movie theaters have earned far less than anticipated. Since the pandemic, only Spider-Man no, uh, Spider no Way Home and Top Gun Maverick have, have managed to become huge successes without China. The latest Spidey adventure did play in Russia, with while Tom Cruise's blockbuster sequel did not. So that's an extra, could have been anything, $200, $300 million. And unfortunately, you know, these guys, Hollywood, this is a business to fucking make money, especially Disney. You know, authority, we're here to make money. And lots of money. Play. The fate of Avatar 2 internationally will be a difference in Cameron's sequel becoming a merely a sizable hit versus a worldwide phenomenon. It was a phenomenon! The original, more than 80%, holy shit, of, it, of its ticket sales came from 3D and premium formats due to its revolutionary use of CGI and motion, motion capture technology. Like I said, for me, over this weekend, I'm going to see RPX, not, not just regular 2D. When Avatar 2 comes out, I'm going to RPX and definitely 3D, so I'm not gonna, I, I can understand that 80% of the fucking income was just in 3D. Holy shit. But since then, you know, um, 3D has all but fallen out of favor with moviegoers. Like even uh, taking my son to see that movie called Brahmastra, we've seen it in 3D. And truth be told, maybe the entire three-hour movie, like two shots, were kind of 3D-ish and nothing. Like you could have took your glasses off and wouldn't have cared. And uh, I think in my life so far, I've seen one thing in theaters, which I love, but is underrated, was uh, Dread. But Dread in 3D and like when they were shooting the bullets and stuff and like they were doing like the 
the drugs there and you see like the glass shattering and the water effects, Dread 3D was cool. But honestly, the past decade, besides the Dread 3D, I can't tell you a single 3D movie that I've went and seen. And just like, I remember when Captain America 1 and 2 were playing back to back and he had like, oh, here's a special 20 bucks for both films in 3D glasses. I'm like, okay, sure. I'll, I'll rewatch the first one. And I watch it. Not a single fucking shot was just like in 3D and worth the, the wearing glasses. And then of course, Winter Soldier comes out and I'm like, well, I'm, I had 3D glasses on. I'm like, where's all the 3D effects? Like it's, it felt like so many films were just tacking on a 3D label. Yeah, what a waste of money. Just to get extra fucking money and, and not nah, just like an avatar actually, you know, you know, freaking utilize a 3D. So what says right here for the sequel, Cameron has continued to push cinematic boundaries that by developing new motion capture technology. Four dazzling underwater sequences. His name is James, James Cameron, the bravest pioneer. No budget too steep, no seat too deep. Who's that? It's him, James Cameron. Now it's up to theater owners, however, to decide if it's worth the expense of equipment upgrade to keep up with the new technology. Because in said I'm in New York and besides two local malls, I can name like five local theaters that are just straight 2D. They don't have the money to fucking pay for IMAX and RPX and 3D and whatever other formats. In fact, in my state alone, only one theater has 4DX. And for me, that's a two and a half hour drive, which I'll probably do it for this one. And Top Gun Maverick was worth the two and a half hour drive to see the shit in 4D. But I think in America alone, besides like what, three 4DX theaters, and there's one in like New York City or something, I think in California. And yeah, I mean, so it's a lot of places aren't going to fucking, you know, for, have the, uh, the funds, especially since the pandemic, to uh, dump in all this, this uh, 3D technology for their theaters. We have no money. James Cameron should not be doubled in his doubt. It's sorry, in his ability to reinvigorate interest in the format as one of the few filmmakers to utilize it effectively, says Robbins. Still, that will be the important narrative to track with the sequel because the format, frankly, has lost appeal with most moviegoers over the past ten years. Yeah, it has. So I would hope that at least for this one, more people will, will you know will want to see 3D. But so. Um, Avatar debuted it in 2009. The film did exactly break records with its $77 million debut. What helped Avatar was repeat viewings, was going back, was staying on top. It just took good word of mouth, as I said right here. But thanks to exceptional word of mouth, premium 3D prices, and repeat customers, Avatar kept defying expectations. Think about Top Gun Maverick with level legs. In fact, Jesus Christ, Top Gun Maverick on my Regal app, they're still playing it. It's already out on digital. They're still playing right now at my local theater, and like I haven't got a chance to see it again. But um, so it held the number one spot for seven consecutive weeks, and eventually climbed to six seven hundred sixty million in North America. For any film to be number one for seven fucking weeks in a row is unheard of, even back then. It's unheard of. Yeah, unheard of. So um, only so one of only four domestic releases to ever surpass seven fifty, and just just America. So like the original. The Way of Water premieres around the holidays, so it has a chance to benefit from limited competition at the box office. It's you know good Christmas present. But Avatar The Way of Water will certainly open big, but in order to land on the top top 10 box office list, it's going to need to repeat viewing and legs. So it says the um, researcher. It's going to need to engage and expand audiences' imagination the way the first film did. But uh, yeah, a couple more months, we'll find out any comments, nothing. But yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm happy, you know, it came back. I do want to see it. We'll see what happens. I'm so, still going to go see Avatar 2, and I'm going to make my, well, this Friday, I'm going to make a laser review just on the re-release, but by the time Avatar 2 comes out, I do want to make a full review, and I'll be honest, guys, like, Avatar, it is what it is. You know, it's like, I take it as serious as, like, a Fast and the Furious movie or a Transformers film. Not the best plot. Some of it's kind of silly. Some of it's kind of goofy and shit, but it's just so goddamn beautiful. So beautiful. I don't care. I still like it for what it is. I feel like Avatar, for a lot of people, it's like the definition of our guilty pleasure movie. Yeah, dude. It's my guilty pleasure. Everybody's got it. You know it. Some of your favorite movies of all time, you know what they are. They're just popcorn film. They're just fun. Maybe stupid, but... We just love it. Avatar is easily my biggest guilty pleasure film, and because I never actually got a chance to see it in theaters, I've only seen it on digital and freaking Blu-ray and stuff, so I'm looking forward to seeing it for the first time. Some people could argue that, you know, some films are made to be seen in the theaters because like it's as somebody who's watched Lord of the Rings um, multiple times, I watch them once a year, a couple weeks back before Rings of Power came out, they had the um, Regal Cinemas had the Lord of the Rings extended editions 
come out in RPX. And I can tell you one thing, my son and my nephew never got to see Lord of the Rings in the theaters because, you know, they're 15 and 12 respectively. So seeing the battle for Helm's Deep up on the RPX theater and the fucking surround sound and the way, like, you know, uh, Gandalf fighting the Balrog. You shall not pass! It's a way different experience watching, like, you know, the, the battle for uh, Pelennor Fields in an RPX theater versus your television. So Avatar, I'm assuming it's going to be the exact same way, plus being remastered and, like, just having updated visuals. So, uh, yeah, boys and girls, we'll see what happens. But, hey, is Avatar back? They're so interested in it. His name is James. Checking my time. I'm gonna finish my lime here and just uh yeah. So you know the deal. Let me pull up Bender and one second. Ready? This calls for a drink. It's not bad lemon lime, so um I don't see the bar yet. Looks like it must have sunk pretty low. I'm heading back to work. With a dying thirst to be the first, could it be? Yeah, it's him, James Cameron.